Hello Masters, thank you very much for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about how to perform accessibility testing using Playwright. I just wanted to remind you that if you come here to my channel and look for the playlist Playwright JavaScript tutorial, you're going to have a lot of free videos that is going to improve your Playwright understanding. It's going to start from a simple install procedure, right? And then we're going to start taking a look of how to perform API testing, how to use fixtures and page object model, how to use visual testing, how to use GitHub actions, and a lot of stuff for you. I hope that you can check it out and let me know your feedback in the comment section of those videos. All right, masters, as we can read in the documentation, Playwright can be used to test your application for many types of accessibility issues. A few examples of problems this can catch include text would be hard to read for users with vision impairments due to the poor color contrast with the background behind it. UI controls and form elements without labels that a screen reader could identify or interactive elements with duplicate IDs, which can confuse assistive technologies, all right? And also, it is telling us that this example rely on this package, the Axe Core Playwright. This is a package that actually help us to perform the accessibility testing using Playwright. And also, here we have a disclaimer that I want to read for you as well. Automated accessibility tests can detect some common accessibility problems, such as missing or invalid properties. But many accessibility problems can only be discovered through manual testing, right? So it is recommending us, uh, well, a mix of the both of both approaches, manual and automation to make sure that we uh, will actually meet the standards, right? I just wanted to read for you this uh, brief of the documentation just to make sure that we are in the same page, all right? Let's start with the installation and let's see how it works. All right, masters, I just wanted to let you know that this repository is free for you. Um, the name of the repository is Playwright Accessibility, right? It is public and you can just clone it, install the dependencies using the command npm install and run the test use using the command npx playwright test, right? So if you want to try it out, you just have to clone it and go ahead and, and use it, right? Um, but if you don't want to and you want to start from scratch, I'm going to give you every single step in right away, actually, okay? So as you can see, this project has the node modules installed. Basically, I just uh, install the dependencies using npm install, if it is your case, or I needed to install a couple of libraries using the respective commands, right? The first command that I used was npm install playwright. This is gonna help me to install playwright in my folder. And then I installed the second library here, which is Oxcore playwright. So as soon as you install them, you're gonna have a couple of new dependencies in your package, the JSON, which are the line 11, Oxcore playwright, and the line 12, playwright test. So we're good to go and we have everything in place. So it is time to check the code. Okay, masters, the first thing that we have to do is import a couple of important things at the beginning of the test file, all right? As you can see in the line number three, I, I'm just um, calling a couple of constants, the test and the expect from the playwright test library. This is essential for every single playwright test. Do you agree, right? Okay, awesome. And then I created a constant named Axe Builder, and it is gonna require the Axe Core Playwright library that we just installed. This is the essential library that we need to perform accessibility testing using Playwright. All right, masters, let's start scanning an entire page. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a pretty simple way, all right? I'm gonna open Visual Studio Code, and you can see that I have a describe and a simple test under that particular describe. The describe is an accessibility testing demo using Playwright. This is the kind of a test suite, right? And then under the test describe, we have the test. And it is gonna be about should pass a general accessibility scan. As you can see, I'm gonna be using the page fixture, all right? And also I'm using a test information. I'm gonna show you why I'm using it in a couple of seconds, all right? I'm gonna open the test and let's see what is going on inside, all right? The first thing in the line 11, it's basically a page that go to. This is gonna be the page that you wanna scan, all right? You can see that I'm scanning the homepage of the Playwright uh, tool. So I'm gonna open it, and you're gonna see that this is the one, 
Awesome, right? Uh, this is gonna be the page that I want to scan. So I'm gonna open again my Visual Studio Code and let's see how we can scan the page. It's pretty, pretty simple. The line 14 here, um, I'm gonna create a constant which is gonna store the accessibility scan results, all right? You can see that this is, this is gonna store the, um, the analyze function from the Axe Builder, all right? And also notice that I'm sending the page fixture for the Axe Builder instance. So it is going to analyze the, the website. And here we have every single result in this particular constant. That's basically what is going on in a simple uh, way to, to say it, right? <laughs> awesome. Now that we have the full page review, there is another option that we have, which is attach the log in the reports. So we can just copy the log and check it out and have a simple way to analyze it, all right? How we can do it? Well, we just have to use this particular code, which is gonna attach the accessibility scan results in the final report that we have in HTML using Playwright, okay? You're gonna see the result in a few seconds. I think it's awesome, all right? Awesome. And the, the final step that we have to do in our test is a simple assertion, all right? As you can see, I'm expecting that my accessibility scan results and the violations doesn't have anything. It's an empty array. However, if there is something, it is gonna throw an error, all right? That's basically the logic under this uh, code. So let's see how we can run this test in a pretty simple way. I'm gonna clear my console and let me run this command. MPX playwright test. This is the common command that we use to run playwright. And you can see that it is running in three workers. It is running in Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox automatically. You can see that we have errors in, in the three different browsers. And let me open the localhost instance to see the report. You can see that we have a report for Chromium, for Firefox, and for WebKit. Let me open the first one for Chromium. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna collapse every single category here, and let me show you what is going on in the test steps. There is an issue in the assertion, expect that to equal, right? That's the first thing that we can notice. Also, you can, in the attachments part, here we have a, a kind of JSON file that we can use to see the error lock. I really like it. You can take a look of what is going on here in a pretty simpler way, right? And then we have another category with errors. So here we have the differences between what was expected and what is going on in the uh, well, in the assertion, right? And you can see different errors here. For instance, the first one is that ensures headings have discernible text, um, right? Let me give you an insight of this. For instance, uh, when I look for the H3 HTML element, there is it is empty. Right, that's one issue of of the ones that it detected. Also, area label attribute doesn't exist or is empty, right? And element has no attribute. Um, I don't know a lot of a lot of issues that it detected. So if you want to take a look of the issues that you have in your website, this is a good good way to do it. So I just wanted to let you know that I was showing you the scanning and the entire page demo. However, there are other possibilities. You can scan it in a specific part of the page, right? As you can see, I just have to look for the element that I want to look, right? You have to wait for it. It is an essential part of the process and then just include this particular element and then analyze it. You're going to have, uh, well, the scan for that particular element. Then we can scan for WCAG violations. You can specify the taxes that you want to check it out, right? So this is another option that you have. And um, if you want to handle known issues and you want to exclude uh, some specific uh, rule that you want to just, just skip, it is as simple as use the exclude function here, right? I actually have, I have a, a kind of template here in the code here we have the disable rules. And if I want to have a clean report <laughs> in the in the log, you, I just have to uh, skip the empty heading and the heading order. So it is gonna, well, skip the rules that I just wanna skip, All right? Then, uh, well, we can disable individual scan rules. That's the, that's the one that I was showing you. 
And and I think that's basically it. Oh, this is important. Using a test fixture for common axe configuration. So you can create a fixture, for instance, in this file, axe test.js. You can use this code here, and it is gonna create a kind of a an axe builder fixture that you just have to include in your test and use it. How you can you do it? As simple as importing it, right? It is gonna require the, the fixture that you just created and then call it as a fixture, make a axe builder, all right? And that's it, you're gonna be able to call the make axe builder without a, any other kind of issue and it is gonna be pretty simpler. It is, you're gonna have the configurations that you wanna use for your scan and you can share it among every single test file that you have available in your project. So masters, thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be here again. I hope that you can let me know in the comment section what do you think about it? Let me know if you reach until the end of the video. Thank you very much. Hit the like button, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.